Cormac McCarthy hates Carl Jung. And our boy Cormac could not end his literary career, not descend into the grave without taking a couple low blow shots at Jung and psychoanalysis in general. And this hurts my heart, seeing two of my favorite friends, two men that influenced me so much, be involved in such a petty fight. And guys, trust me, I get it. The pastoral man-man writers, they never loved the woo-woo interpretive stuff. And you know, Carl Jung and the Jungians, they go crazy with that stuff. Like They're almost as bad as the Hemingway scholars. However, McCarthy throughout his work utilizes dream sequences and archetypal flows to depict subconscious projection because there has to be at least a little of that happening in the italicized section sections if not all of it so if you guys don't know my name is ian and we do a bunch of deep dives on into cormac mccarthy on this channel i have a cormac mccarthy course and newsletter t-shirts everything you want to hopefully go deeper but before we can descend and become the ninth passenger we need to uncover mccarthy's distaste for Carl, Carl Jung and maybe mend some of the trauma between. So the axiomatic foundation of McCarthy's intolerance of Jung is the classic case of the dick measuring contest common in male dominated fields. We see this in athletics and the sciences. You guys know what I'm talking about. And this is happening because McCarthy believes that psychology is not a science and it isn't a science. It's one of the soft social sciences, but McCarthy and, you know, and the way psychology is treated in the world and its impact on the world and on thinking, and obviously if you like watch like Adam Curtis's documentary, The Century of Self, Psychoanalysis Influenced the Nazis, and a lot of the crazy revolutions and thought, pra- thought patterns in the 20th century. People love and talk about psychology even when they are uneducated. You know, go to Raised by Narcissists on Reddit and everyone's just doing quasi-psychology on themselves and on other people. You don't see that very often with science. You don't get together with friends most of the time unless you have really cool friends and talk about the biological implications of the fauna on the west side of the mind being ruined. Our vocabulary has a lot more psychological terms within it as a society than it does scientific. Even though psychology is an elective most of the time in public education and science is taken for six years in secondary school and then in college and university, you have to take you know an advanced or somewhat harder science course to even graduate. So back to McCarthy. A lot of the information I'm going to be drawing from is from Stella Maris. I'm not going to be spoiling anything from that text if you haven't read it, but I'll obviously be quoting the quotes about Carl Jung that are said in that novel, but nothing really gets ruined. So in Stella Maris, Alicia Western tells her psychologist, psychiatrist, that psychologists reject the idea that a neurotic's head contains order. This beautiful order is alien to the psychologist who stays on the outskirts of the neurotic's head, of their experience, and refuses to map out their psychotic consciousness. And this is actually a very popular assertion by a lot of people, not just in psychology, but this is said all the time in interpersonal relationships. Like, you don't understand me. You don't have my experience. You don't, you're not willing to come here and experience what I'm experiencing. And these psychiatrists and these psychologists, through their endless questions, queries, and theories, refuse themselves entrance into their clients' minds. They just, they're doing that as a facade to block themselves from actually having to confront what's going on with them, to experience it. So this actually parallels McCarthy's vision and his 2017 opinion piece called The Kukule Problem. And further, you could say his own approach to literature. McCarthy postulates a separation between language and the unconscious in The Kukule Problem. He rather argues that the unconscious is a biological function meant to solve problems. He he called it in his uh, second to last interview, the world's greatest uh, problem solver. And most of these problems are solved through symbols rather than language, as in the case of August Kukule's scientific revelation given to him through the Ouroboros in a dream. MacArthur furthers, furthers this rejection of the unconscious and language with his fixation on rejecting any interpretation of his works. McCarthy has been known to say to people who ask him about his work, it's all on the page. Otherwise saying, it's all in the conscious light. There is nothing hidden. It's all here. There is no iceberg theory happening. And so before we can really go any deeper, I want to now show you guys the quotes from Stella Maris and see some of the smackdowns of McCarthy on Jung. So the first quote relates to McCarthy's criticism of psychology as a soft science. And it starts off with the therapist asking Alicia, and we're going to read the rest of the quote. You wouldn't agree that their theories are nevertheless based upon actual observation that is psychologists? And Alicia responds by saying, quote, like astrology, you are not serious. 
Maybe not at all. At least Freud doesn't attempt to say what dreams are, and that's a good thing. Yes, because he doesn't know. Creating a language for non-existent categories is not a particularly good strategy for those wishing to leave some sort of intellectual legacy. There has to be a metaphor for such enterprises, some of the theoretical bones widening in the waste. So McCarthy does not believe that the categories that Jung is feeling actually have any basis in reality and can't be taken further. Even like the archetypes, so Jung looks at stories throughout history and all these things and develops, you know, 12 or so archetypes. Well, those are in a non-existent category, but the sciences, you can leave an intellectual legacy in those areas because those, those aren't going to change. Even if it becomes disproven or you, science moves on to something else, you are still the person that was the best at that time. And he douses psychology by care, by comparing it to astrology, which for someone like McCarthy is as big of an insult as you can give a uh, social science or humanity. And he said something very interesting. Freud doesn't attempt to say what dreams are, and that's a good thing. And you could say that's very similar to Cormac McCarthy's prose in the sense that we get these dream, italicized, symbolic sequences, but why don't the reader, like the, the characters never think about it like, holy shit, that was crazy. What, does, does that relate to this or that? And that's McCarthy writing characters in general, other than Stella, or, excuse me, the passenger slash Stella Maris and No Country for Old Men. Most of the characters remain very flat. We don't see very much introspection within them. However, is Alicia suffering from all this schizophrenia because she is suffering the crisis of being too logical to question this? So there becomes this point. I've known a lot of people have gone over this hump where they become so logical, so smart, so scientific that they can't view reality in a symbolic way. They don't want to interpret because they're like, it could always be wrong. There is no right answer. And the whole point of psychology is to help activate you as the individual to find those right answers, to be able to walk through the doors and because there is a right answer. For anyone out there who has done dream interpretation, you know that there is a connection. McCarthy here is poo-pooing it, but I've kept a dream journal since I was 15 for the last, you know, so 14 years of doing that, mostly nightly. And when I look back at certain times of my life, when I, and I correspond it to like, a, I have kept a journal the entire time, you would not believe the things that my dreams were trying to tell me and what they were meaning. When you, when I look back in hindsight, this, the symbols and wisdom that were embedded with it, embedded in there 100% had meaning and guidance. Guidance, And a lot of the dreams, 99% of dreams, most of the time, it's all just hogwash bullshit, random things happening and being dumped. But there are metaphors embedded within dreams. And to understand them, you first of all have to become symbol literate. You have to understand the referential. Then you have to compare your symbol literacy against your own use of symbols in your dreams and see if they really connect to that. And most of the time, they honestly don't. But there's a good portion of symbols in my dreams that actually have a correlation with the standard dream interpretation that you would maybe get of what that symbol means in a dream. And if it's not the exact definition, it's actually a starting point that can lead me there without that much more, without that much more work. And that's what a psychoanalyst does. That's what Jung was trying to do. He was trying to create these symbols in the dream, not to tell you that this is what it is, but that to then prompt you with the question and with the conversation to take you further. That's what the conversation is about. The talking and the prodding and the questions leads you to the actual subjective interpretation that you're going to come on come to on your own. And that has meaning. McCarthy can try to throw away, you know, through his character, dream interpretation all he wants, but I think that is a missed opportunity in general. I have lived countless lifetimes within dreams. Someone said the other day, you have, I was, I was talking about an older author and kind of trashing them. They're like, you don't know what you're talking about. You have no life experience. And I'm like, compared to most people, I experience hours of dreaming every single night. I have six to 10 dreams every single night and record all of them. I know people who don't dream at all. My dreams, have I've experienced them and put them into writing and put them into memory. And thus, I have experienced so many different things in in life in the dream world, which is just, as you know, has just as much feeling. So anyway, I think it's very valuable for anyone out there who's trying to do some sort of spiritual work that's not too crazy and really sent, based on you, you know, start keeping a dream journal and getting into that. And I think the science, I think the canon speaks to this, that the Jungians and Carl Jung are still living today. No one cares about science. And I know that's a bad thing in our society that people don't care about science. But I think a lot of the reason that people don't care about science is that they don't like what it does to you. Being too logical, being too scientific, being too inundated with technology changes the general structure of who you are and how you experience reality. And it isn't that fun. 
I have personal experience with this because I've been a yoga teacher for 10 years now. And for a while, I was very into anatomy. My yoga teacher, my mentor, Simon Borg Olivier, he's one of the leading authorities in the yoga world on anatomy. And he is like got crazy theories about yoga anatomy and yoga. But at some point, worrying about the anatomy takes away from the experience. It made yoga like worrying, like when I was in a pose, like worrying about if I should flex or unflex my elbow and if, you know, what way it should be rotated started to become too meta and took away from the experience. And so now let's continue this with another quote from Alicia. And this is her talking nicely about um, Carl Jung. Quote, I think what most people, I think what most people think, that it's caring that heals, not theory, good the world over. And it may be even that in the end, all problems are spiritual problems. As moon-minded as Carl Jung was, he probably was right about that. Keeping in mind that the German language doesn't distinguish between mind and soul. So this is very revelatory. I mean, I think this gives some redemption to McCarthy kind of poo-pooing Jung a little bit, and he says it, and I believe it. I mean, this is, I think at some point you realize that all problems around the world, they are spiritual problems. People like to talk about class and identity and like all this stuff, but the crisis we are in, it's not political, it's not religious. It's a problem with confronting the mind and soul, whatever that is, Dasein. And that's where psychology has come, that's what it's come to today with the focus on cognitive behavioral therapy and data analysis, the caring aspect, the aspect that actually wants to examine the spiritual problems of somebody is now gone. You're not allowed to do that. That could be considered illegal and you may have your license removed if you're still trying to do things like that. Because we now through mass data have the data set and we say, Johnny is screaming and 80% of people had success with people who scream to make them not scream with this data set or with this approach and doing all this. So we're, so you have to do this and it does work. But why was Johnny screaming in the first place? Now Johnny doesn't scream, but why was Johnny screaming? There's like so many levels and layers to these problems that people don't want to discuss. And that's because we have now entered hyper reality. We, there's so much information entering and technology in progress and we are becoming more suburbanized and urbanized and losing connection to anything, that we don't have these opportunities to really reflect on these things anymore. So now we're going to continue into another quote. It's about three slides. I made it very big, though. I just want to make sure we got it all in. Um, So quoting Alicia, quote, Not all. Jung tells of a case that suggests that aberrant mental states may not be in themselves an illness, but rather a protection against a greater one. We know that consciousness never goes to zero, except in death. He had a comatose patient at Bergozali who came down with a serious illness while still in the coma, until he finally sat up in bed and began to order the nurses about. This went on until he recovered, whereupon he went back to sleep, never to wake again. I don't know if that story is true. Probably it is. If for no other reason than the story is smarter than Jung, who after all, who after all had to hire someone to take the math exam for medical school. Anyway, the answer is yes. I do think that he was sent. I think she's talking about the kid there. But look at that big hot shot right there. Who after all had to hire someone to take the math exam for medical school? I mean, that for as a scientist, as someone as McCarthy, that is as big of a shot. Like Carl Jung, because he did not, he wasn't able to be able to pass the math exam at medical school. That means that he is an absolute idiot. I know a lot of people who are like that because as someone who has always failed math, maybe had some people help me with math throughout the various stages of my academic career. There's a certain way that people talk to you who are just good at math. They'll be like, they look at you like you're dumb and you're like, dude, it's just math, just study. And it's like, dude, I sit and study and it doesn't work out. I could sit down and write a 20 page paper on the history of the guys that figured out this area of math, but I can't do the math. So let's return. So let's, enough on that. Let's return to the main point of so Jung tells of a case, Jung states that mental illness may not be in themselves an illness, but rather a protection against a greater one. And when this guy in a coma wakes up and basically heals himself, it unlocks something else. And then eventually, once he was fully recovered, he went back down into the coma. And obviously, this is a very interesting concept. And when you think about it, it's like very mind blowing if this concept that Jung is talking about is true. Because with today, with all these people who are having like mental health issues, what are they what are they protecting themselves against? And in my opinion, they're protecting themselves against the empty nihilism that we've created in our culture. They're protecting themselves against a vast void that has now been created without without because we have no value. Values. Now, I am not religious. I have my values are shot all the time. I've done a lot of screwed up things in my life. You know, he is who he is who without sin may cast the first stone. But I know for most people, beneath the facade of whatever illness, whatever they are dealing with, is the most scary thing in the universe. And that's that they are nothing, that they have no idea and no purpose in this reality. And that's one of the first, and they are smart, emotional, and they have all this capacity, more so than anyone else in history, but they have less meaning in purpose than anyone else in history. Surfs with nothing except 
wanting to stay alive and continue their family and enjoy some small moments of peace sometimes have more purpose and a mission than individuals do in our society. And I don't know if McCarthy is talking about that, but that's just something that I see if I want to just kind of play on this idea and apply it to modern life. Let me know what you kind of think he meant by this quote. I don't know why Alicia necessarily brought this up in the relevancy. I was trying to figure that out, but it doesn't, you know, it fits well, obviously, into her condition and what is she protecting herself against. And she's unleashing, un maybe unleashing her mental illness and it's unleash the horror and all that but I may be off base about that I need to do more research into maybe some of that stuff so I think deep down that Cormac McCarthy has a respect for Carl Jung but I don't think he likes what Carl Jung's teachings have become a lot of people you know know I mean if you get into the Jung, Jung studies you know that the Jungians and Carl Jung have become vastly different so if you want to see my video on Cormac McCarthy talking about in an interview about Robert Oppenheimer go check that out that one over here peace